Um, y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Lady Nika. Um, I know those of y'all who watch my reviews or whatnot probably thought this was going to be my next upload was going to be if loving you is wrong. Um, I'll get to that. I ain't even looked at that shit yet. But I will look at it later on and possibly come in and do a review. Um, yesterday I didn't get nothing done because I had to work a double and to be honest with you, I'm tired. <laughs> you know, real tired. But... I was just sitting around here today and I was thinking, and I was also surfing the uh, internet, just various things like that, excuse the light, and I don't feel like turning all that shit on, it's hot in Louisiana, I'll turn it on when I need to, I think y'all can see me enough, and I put the red ass dress on, so hopefully y'all will be able to see the darkness, the melanin, and my skin, and you know, what not, hopefully it's alright, I hope it is, but I was just sitting around this house, watching uh, social media, listening to the news, MSNBC and CNN, and just thinking, and I felt some kind of way, y'all, and I did, because I started thinking deep, and I said to myself, at first, I don't like to really get on camera unless it's entertainment related, and say much, because people so sensitive, I'll be talking about one situation, and Somebody will take what I'm saying and apply it to somebody else and it starts up a whole bunch of shit. Well, by now, y'all know I'm past the bullshit, so you, you put, this, put it where you want it with what I'm finna say. Because the show ain't about no damn YouTube shit. But it's just things that have been on my mind. Like, I was watching. I was reading or watching something. One of the two. I told you I've been doing it all. And it said that African and uh, minorities, us. We are the largest consumers in this world, in the United States. And that's cool till you think about we also the most did, uh, not respected. We are the least uh, amount of people to do things that can, you know, pass on generation to generation. We got more home uh, renters than we got home owners. We got more people working for a business than we got actually owning their own business. And if we are per consuming a large, damn near the largest amount of, of goods and services, what's wrong with that picture to you? What's wrong with that picture? What's wrong with us not being able to elevate and become owners and, and start our own generational wealth? I, I, I work my, my ass to the bone, bitch. I swells up like I am now and everything else because I'm trying to leave some generational wealth. I'm trying to start it with my generation and pass it on down to my kids. I want my children to not have to, I want them to have choices in life that Sally Sue and John have. And we don't, we don't have that because a lot of us become complacent. That's one of the biggest problems with black people. We're quick to become complacent with something. Complacency is good in certain situations, but not in every aspect of your life. You shouldn't be, you should, uh, every day you wake up, you should be trying to elevate to the next level. And I don't understand people that don't. Every day I wake up with a plan, y'all. I wake up with a plan. Whether I see that plan finished by the end of the day or not, I set that for myself. And I work and work and work until I get it. Because I don't want to be just one of the people in the number. I'm trying to make my number matter. You know what I'm saying? And it hurts me that you got people of my, minority people such as myself, who don't seem to understand that it's deeper than what, it, it, you got to grind today to chill tomorrow. Now, if we consuming, uh, we are the large cons we, we are the largest population of consumers of goods and services, and we don't own shit, damn near. We don't. We not starting nothing. For, what does that say to you all? Doesn't it say something is wrong with that? Now, I'm not the most articulate bitch. I never said I would, but I'm gonna try to convey my thoughts as best I possibly could. I'm not beautiful, so I don't have her words and you know her elegant, her uh, eloquent way of putting across what she got to say to y'all. I'm gonna just, you know, I'm just me. You know what I'm saying? I do me, and I say it my way. But I do think that y'all will be able to get my point. I'm sitting here saying to myself, okay, so basically. 
it's the brothers and sisters out here going and spending their coin all the time for these businesses, you know, in these businesses or whatnot. Then I look at the percentage of black business owners. Then I look at the percentage of black people who own their own homes. Something is wrong here. Okay? And I say that we become complacent because we're except we, we done been beat down mentally so bad that a lot of us don't believe that we can achieve. So we decide we're going to take whatever they give us and be grateful with it. Why? When this country was built off our backs. Why? Why do we have to be okay with where we are in life? Why can't we work harder and have the opportunities presented to us that some of these others have? If we got to fight and scrape to get the opportunities, at least get the opportunity so you can pass it down to your, your next of kids and stuff. I don't understand. I don't, I'm, I'm at a loss. And then what kills me on top of all of that, and I'm going to be all over the place. Y'all know how I am. Follow me. I bless you in. Another thing that upsets me is the crab and the barrel mentality that many of us African Americans have toward one another. Let me tell y'all something. I done been to shindigs, because that's what I call them. I done been to so many shindigs with the elitist. They don't always like each other, baby. Do y'all think that white people and other, you know, do y'all really think white people be having kumbaya moments with each other all the time? They just as nasty as we are. But the thing about it is, they not going to do shit to prohibit the growth of the race. We will. We will tear each other down. We will try to put obstacles in the road to stop the next man from having. All because we jealous. Or just don't like that person, so we gonna stop their their growth is it, with everything that we got in us. And and to me, you know what that is? That is that mentality of the slave driver who beat us down time and time again and told us we couldn't achieve. And if you see somebody trying to, if you come and tell me about it, then I'm gonna make sure that you know I make sure you get your family get some scented soap or we'll give you a, a couple of extra more whatever it is that they offer us in crumbs and scraps to you know to to, to be a good to be a good uh uncle tom for us we'll, we'll do that we sit up here and we actually believe that okay let's just say you come from the urban neighborhood the projects or whatever you know the people staying in the projects I remember one time y'all down in New Orleans, it was a mama, it was a grandmother, a mother, her children, and then her grandkids all had done got apartments around there in them damn apartments. And they was just, you know, the big thing is they celebrated, oh, such and such and got her an apartment over here, she gonna be moving over here. And they would have parties and be celebratory over some stuff like that. And my thing is this right here. It's good when you move out of your parents' house and get you somewhere else to stay or whatnot. But bitch, why are we really celebrating? You moving in you moving out of one part project apartment into the next. You don't think that's more than what you can be? You don't see yourself. You can live in the nicer neighborhoods. You can go to school and apply yourself and go and get you a job to where you can afford to live better than this. Do you honestly think this is the end of the road for you? Why do we think that? Why are we, why are we still carrying on the slave mentality? Some of us around here making six figures or more a year still got a slave mentality. And I don't understand that. I don't understand that you can do whatever it is that you set your mind to doing it. If it wasn't for the laws of the land these days, see, pre, uh, like they were, it's not like it was before the civil rights movement. Things have changed. It's certain, you know, we still get discrimination but see they got to tuck and hide this shit nowadays you can't just be out and out just you know racist or disrespectful to a person or do something to a person discriminate against a person nowadays you got to be crafty with that shit and of course they are some crafty people so they they managed to get away with it but it's why not turn this thing in your favor 
If you know that you qualify X for X, Y, and Z, take advantage of it. Even if it means you got to fill out a little extra paperwork and you might have to do something that makes you feel uncomfortable for a little while. But think about the greater good. What about the greater good? I don't, I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand that. We don't we don't want better for ourselves and we hate when someone else does something to better their lives. And I ain't going to never stop talking about this generational wealth because I see it. I see it every day. Grandma and grandpa had a little store once upon a time. And now it's a national chain with stores all throughout the United States. Matter of fact, with stores throughout the country. Because mom and pops was willing to make the ultimate sacrifice. Instead of when they started making a little coin in the store, instead of them, you know, doing what we would do, which is start flossing, buying shit you know you can't afford, uh, trying to make sure everybody know that you got it. See, girl, let me tell you something. When you got it, you don't have to tell nobody. That's one thing about money. <laughs> it speak for itself. Okay. You you I done seen multimillionaires with fucking uh what they used to call them damn boot cut jeans on, a cowboy hat and a damn near tattered shirt, and them motherfucker could buy and sell my whole block three or four times. Money speaks for itself, baby. Y'all spend we spend too much time trying to look good and put on a, a front that we got it. I just sat back here doing this last, you know, this here current tax season that we, we've been in and whatnot, watching what people do. People kill me. Soon as you get that little six, seven, eight thousand dollars, you want to run out to the stove and buy all the, uh, the Remy Perusian mongoloid hair and shit you want to put your ass in. Designer outfits, you know motherfucking well knock off designer brands that your ass wouldn't even must be buying if you had a little extra money. You wants to go places, you know, go out to the clubs and pop pussy in the club. You want to, um, what else they do? We, we, we want to buy uh, cars that damn near lemons ain't going to last you past the income tax season. By the time income tax season leave, your ass got that shit sitting up under your carport because it don't run no damn more. And you done spent all the money so you can't get that bitch fixed. You done put two and three thousand dollars worth of uh, customization in on your vehicle, be it rims, music, what's not. You know what I'm saying? You want to do that. That's what we do. But how many of us actually start a CD? How many of us invest in an IRA? How many of us open up a separate bank account and vow and live up to every two weeks or every week when I get paid, X amount of dollars of my check will go here. So you can even set this shit up like that now. You can have uh, to, uh, go to your human resource department in most places and they will take however much money you want out your check before you even touch it and put it in this separate account and you leave it there and you let it sit there and build up interest and stuff. You don't go out and buy unnecessary shit. Shit you ain't had all year. You can save your money. Don't get that shit because clearly if you ain't had it all year, you don't need it. And let that bill for you. We can't do that. Soon as we get a dollar the world knows it because, baby, you get to having up trucks at your house. You get the FedEx trucks coming to your house. You got four, five, you got cars in your damn yard that got paper tags on it because, bitch, you didn't go and get your registration to get your hard plate. I mean, it's just, uh, it's frustrating. It's frustrating because I want us as a people to do better. I'm going to make it my way. I'm going to make it me. I'm, 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 I'm going to make it a die train. I'm like, motherfucker, 50 cent, I don't even fuck with him. Get rich or die trying. We are more than what we are becoming as people. It ain't about all of this bullshit out here. We want to do something that you grind now, you chill later, my nigga. For real. If you grind now, you chill later. And sit back and let your let your seeds take on the business and teach them what they need to do to keep it going. So when their kids grow up, they can have a little song. I, I don't understand that. And stop hating to see your brother or your sister get something. 
Baby, I made a Facebook post a couple weeks ago. It went something along the lines of that. I never hate when I see one of my neighbors. I don't give a damn if you're black, white, blue, or green. I don't hate when I see nobody being blessed. You know why I don't hate? Because when I see them being blessed, they let me know God in the neighborhood. Bitch, I could be next. You need to be ready. So I don't hate on nobody. I ain't, I ain't, I do not feel that way. Even in my, you know, with the way my life has gone, all the shit I lost last year, I still don't fucking feel like I'm hating on no damn body. Hey, for what? You grind harder. I feel like everything happened for a reason. It was meant for me to go through last year. It ain't talking about the shit on YouTube. I'm talking about my real life. I'm talking about my real life. It was meant for me to go through that so that I could open my eyes to a lot of things that I was letting slide. Sometimes you got to be drugged down a pig or two to reconnect with who you really are so that when you go on your sword back up there, you won't likely come back down again. It was a reason for all the day. Now, it's not, you know, I'm not going to go into what the reason to my, from what I figured out is why it all happened because it's personal. I mean, I'll share a lot of my life with you all, but there are some things in my life that are personal, and that is one of them. So I'm not going to go into no long spiel about, oh, I learned this, that, and this. No, no. Just know that I understand it was a purpose behind all of that. And as crazy as this finna sound, I thank God for it because it made me a better person. I'm not the same person today that I was one year ago sitting in this camera from y'all, in front of y'all. That's called growth. My mindset ain't the same. My hustle ain't the same. My determination has spiked greatly. Another thing I don't like is you might, I, this is what I don't like. If you got something you want to ask me or you feel like you want to ask somebody, Ain't it more appropriate to go to that person and ask them a question opposed to being indirect, nasty to a person? Then when you go, you get nasty with them and they clap back because that's what I do, really. Cooking lines in this bitch. That's really what I do in real life. But if you want to know something, you want you got questions. Ain't it better to ask that person that question than to try to be nasty, nice with a person? See, I know nasty, nice. I'm gonna tell you why I know it because I'm the queen of that shit. Yeah, I'm a humble hoe. Yes, I am. Today, I'm a humble hoe. But I was a nasty bitch once before. And I know how people can be. Again, not supporting your own. Being ugly to people. For what? Just because we on YouTube, we don't have to tell y'all every aspect of our lives. It ain't your damn business. See, that's why I don't like social media sometimes. Because social media has given you people a false sense of what they suppose, what they're entitled to know. Now, if I'm my YouTube channel, I do, uh, I do review, sh uh, show reviews, uh, real talk videos, and entertainment news. Okay, that's what I do over here. That's all I really got to give you. I ain't got to give you shit else about me. But because of the way I am, I want this. I want my channel to be more like a. You know, family-oriented channel, not saying that I'm for the kids, I'm for the adults, the young adults to the old adults. But I see y'all as extended family, so over here, I share a lot of my life, but there's still a great deal of my life y'all don't know nothing about. And you ain't supposed to, because that's not a requirement for me to be here on YouTube and for you to like what I'm doing. You don't need to know nothing about what's going on in my personal life to that degree. Now, a lot of y'all have shared jobs with me, but that was a choice you made, okay? I didn't ask you. And I'm here for you, honey. I'm here for you. Some of y'all know, y'all correspond with me late at night and stuff. Because I do care. But don't ever overstep your boundaries with me. 
please don't because until there is a definite strong bond built between us i'm talking about like well i don't met you a couple of times the kids know you then i don't feel like there's certain things about me you should ask me about myself because it ain't your damn business i'm not gonna ask you nothing about you that's personal and trust me i have a lot of questions for a lot of people but i don't ask because it's called respect i want to get to a point with you before i ask you that shit to where you're comfortable and you're not offended by what i say People get too comfortable with you sometimes and they say stuff and it's hurtful. It's hurtful. It really is. And then, we, like me, back the old me would snap. The new me, I don't say nothing. But I let you know. I don't really say that much. But what I do say, you know that you kind of stepped on my toes a little bit. I don't know nobody on YouTube, okay? I don't know none of these folks. Even the five people I went down there to on a trip with, I don't know them people like that. Them men, them people we met via way of YouTube. We we tried to be friends, you know, talking on the phone or whatnot and everything. And I think had we all met each other first before we did that, we probably never would have went on that trip because it would have been immediately known that we ain't probably needed it's we we cool as far as i have no ill will but sometimes people just they personalities don't snap and it's it's horrible that you find that out after you around a person and kind of got to deal with them for a couple of days i ain't for everybody they ain't for everybody either and clearly we weren't for each other because what happened okay and then let's talk about People telling you what you what you should do, okay? How you should feel. I ain't never got on this camera and told nobody that it's a certain amount of time that you should feel something. Or you should stop feeling some kind of way. You can feel how you want to feel for the rest of your life if that's what you want to do. As long as you ain't bringing that shit to me. I don't never tell a person when they should be over a situation that hurt them because it ain't my place to tell you that. I don't know how deep that something hurt you. Even if I don't want to hear the fucking shit no more. I'm still as your friend. As the person that I have portrayed to y'all on this camera. As a person who is willing to listen and give you my time outside of me being on camera. I listen to a lot of stuff. You know, it ain't, it ain't just one or two, baby. It's a couple of people that I, I have a lot of correspondence with. And I ride with you to the end. But one thing I will never tell you is when you should be over a situation because I don't know how deeply this shit hurt you. So if anybody tell you you should, you can tell them to go straight to hell because that ain't what it is. Now let's talk about these motherfucking black Trump supporters. Because see, I saw some of this shit down on the Facebook too. Y'all kill me. You black Trump supporters kill me. If it was not for the laws of the land today, what role do you think you would play dealing with Donald Trump 101? I hope you don't think you'll be Omarosa. She wouldn't be where she is today if the laws of the land that was in place prior to civil rights, the civil rights movement was in place. This woman wouldn't be sitting in that White House doing whatever it is that she do. Us darker people would be field slaves, and the lighter ones would be the house niggas, okay? Let's just put it out there. So when y'all sitting here going up for this man, talking about he doing what he said he was going to do, he sure is. But it's a catch-22 to everything. It's somewhere up in there he going to loop and fuck you too. Because you are not one of the chosen people, honey, for him. So when you running around here laughing and talking about, oh, he did what he said he was going to do by fine, you know, people and stuff. Okay, well, let me tell you something. Every dog got their day and a good dog got two. 45 entire administration is straight bullshit to me. And I don't, kudos to them children, them graduates of that, that predominantly black school. They told them kids, look, if you... Don't, you know, if you walk out on her, then you won't receive your diploma. So they said, okay, I got another surprise for that bitch. They started booing that hoe and turning their backs on that bitch. And that's what they were supposed to have done. Fuck this, it devotes. Go back to that 
extremely nice life that you have, you've always had. Your nice cars, your nice home, and your nice influential friends. You Girl, you are not even qualified to be in the damn, uh, the role that he gave you. You're not qualified to have that role. But we, I guess qualifications don't mean nothing in this administration because if it did, Donald Trump wouldn't be the president right now. Oh, I know they're going to they gonna demonetize this motherfucking video, but I don't give a fuck. Shit, I already probably been screwed this money anyway, so bitch, I might as well go on the fuck on in and say what the hell I want to say. I ain't going to meet the quota, so go on and just fuck it up completely. She's ill. She is ill uh, prepared to have the role that she's got right now. This woman don't know nothing about no mother. That lady don't know nothing about no education. For her to have that cap and gown on to come there and think she going to give her speech at their commencement exercise probably was a slap in the face to a lot of them because she don't know the struggle. She don't understand. How many student loans she done applied for? All her children, none. You know why? Because they come from generational wealth. She got it. Just like, I don't understand why y'all was all, you know, the black people that were so down for Trump. You see what he trying to do with this health care thing? Now, some of the issues that you have, that you thought was never be a pre-existing condition, could very well be a pre-existing condition, causing you problems when you get ready to go see the uh, the old doctor down there at the hospital. Make America great. Where? First of all, it wasn't never great to me. You can't call a country great that you stole and had another group of people come in and build up for you. You stole it from the Indians and you stole us from our, our native land. Although some of us sold some of us to, to the peoples. But that, that's the side point. That's a conversation for a different day, different time. Bottom line is you stole this country. See, you didn't discover America. I don't know. I, you know what? It killed me. That I had, I heard some little kids one time saying, this was a couple years back, that Christopher Columbus discovered America. How the fuck? No, he didn't. First of all, you can't discover lands that are already inhibited. If somebody was already there, you ain't discover shit because they was there. Then you go get, you go over there. And you go get you a whole tribe, baby. You go get you a damn near mini nation of us and put us to field to work the land and build it up for you. Only for centuries to pass, and we still don't get no damn respect. And we, we this is post civil rights movement. We still got the, we still at the bottom of the list of everything. And it pisses me off that us as black people can't understand that we are not getting, it ain't getting no better for us. You got to make it better for you. You got to make it better for the next man. I don't care if I don't like Sally Sue and John. And Sally Sue and John is going to get in that position and it's going to some kind of way help elevate me in some kind of way. Sally Sue and John got my full damn support. I'm behind them 100%. You know why? Because that's what the white people do. They don't like each other. They just like us, they human. But they got the sense enough to know that to help one another build up. The Ku Klux Klan always say it's about the race. The white race. We doing this for the white race. Well, what are we as black people going to do for the black race? We ain't going to do shit because we can't even we can't even stand and see each other get a $2 raise on a goddamn job with our hate. We can't come up on no type of look and get a couple thousand dollars. Because how the fuck you be getting? Get you a couple thousand dollars. We ain't even got sense enough to save that and build from that. We wants to get out there and flow show and have fun. Everything is instant with us. We we microwave bitches in ourselves. We don't know nothing about saving and taking time and adding on to it and letting it build up, you know, interest and, and things like that. We, we don't have any. We, we don't do that. That ain't what we doing. That ain't what we doing. We want the flow show. We got to let the world know that we own right now. Kills me. 
And another thing I want to touch on before I get up out of here, because I just wanted to get some shit off my chest. I don't give a fuck what the situation is. Family need to know family. Okay? Family need to know family. Even if you don't fuck with family, you need to know who your family is. And you need to make sure that your offsprings do too. They need to know their cousins uh, three and four uh, generations on down. They need to know their uncles and aunts. Parents, if you're not going to be a part of your child's life, you know, as far as helping or bring them, but at least keep them aware of who their family is so situations like what my last story time won't happen. Because I'm going to tell y'all something. I've been in my motherfucking feelings since I did that video because I did, they did there, and, you know, I called over there to check on them, see how he was feeling and stuff, and the girl is still there. That leads me to believe that they... That ain't what we do. That ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. Now, it ain't they fault. I don't blame them. I blame both their parents. Because she should have been. And that's my friend. I know she going to see this. But she knew I was going to do this. Because I already told her. So don't get in my comments and ask me do she know. Because fuck yeah, she know. I'm not the type of bitch going to talk about your ass. And don't let you know I'm talking about you. I'm not a sneaky hoe. I'm an upfront bitch. Okay, so, uh, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone because that, that, ain't, that ain't for me. Let me just leave it alone. I'll say this right here. Family shouldn't be fucking up on each other. That's all I got to say. Uh, I just wanted to come down here today. Like I said, I had some shit on my heart. I feel like seeing it. My girl told me on Facebook, go on vent and do a video. I said, well, you know, I, I usually try not to say nothing because every time I say something, People tying what I say back to this shit from last year. And I wish y'all would stop fucking doing that. Because I'm a person. At the end of the day, I'm past that bullshit. If you still there, then you stay there with the motherfucker. Leave me alone with it. I don't want to talk about that no more. And I will not. And if I mention it on a video or something like that, that's to show you the growth. I'm show, I'm comparing it's an analysis, bitch. It's not something for you to read, try to open it back up to a conversation. Because the shit is over with. Some people got together. They ain't like each other. Folks decided to get in their feelings and say whatever the fuck they felt like saying. Okay, end of story. Bitch survived it. Okay, whatever. I'm on to something else. And I'm sick of... Oh, we just don't support each other. That shit drives me. That... We are the leaders. We are the leading group of consumers of goods and services. Yet we are the lowest number of people. Well, it's a it's a small percentage of black people that own businesses and an even smaller percentage of black people that are actually homeowners. That shit there fucks me up. So you just going to let these people treat you like shit and you're going to keep supporting their business and making sure that they kids and grandkids and grand grandkids, all of them going to go to school and have a life that your children can't have because you became complacent and wanted to continue to support a motherfucker that don't support, don't support you nor recognize you as a human being. They still try to see you as one or uh, three-fifths of a person in some places. Try to see it. I, you know what? I'm done. That's all I got to say.